My name is Kain Tanagenius and today we are going to be taking our lesson 3 or lecture 3 of our machine learning 101 lecture series. If you are joining for the first time, you can also follow up. You simply need to go back to review lesson 1 and 2 which are in the playlist following uh, before this one. Also, I'd like to remind you if you've not subscribed, click on subscribe button below this video so that you can get updates when a new lesson is made as new lessons are made every second day. And secondly, I would like to mention that today's class will be we are going to be covering all classes of machine learning problems. That is, we want to look at classes of machine learning problems. The reason this is important is because in machine learning, we are going to be solving problems. And before you can solve a problem successfully, you need to determine what class of problem is this. Are you going to be making an estimate about a bigger population? Are you going to be making prediction about the future? Are you going to be determining a strategy to win a game? Are you going to be making some inference or something? So the first thing we need to do is we need to know that all know all classes of problems out there. And then we are going to be looking at methods of solving it in another tutorial. So let's look at classes of machine learning problem. Again, this is procedure based class and all the procedures are actually there. And today we are going to be opening Jupyter Notebook for the first time or for the second time. And we are going to be using data. We are going to generate data in Excel move it into Jupyter Notebook and actually use it to explain these classes of machine learning problems. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open Jupyter Notebook, which is under Anaconda. While it opens, I'm going to open Microsoft Excel so that I can generate some data we are going to use to work. So as a machine learning expert, you should be able to use spreadsheet very easily. So this data is Let's call it data about students in a class. So let's just assume that they are students. For instance, we have, uh, uh, let's not worry about their names. So these students have height and they have weights. And they have last score. All right, so we have the last call on a previous test they wrote, and now we are interested in their, knowing their score. Great. So the question now, is there a relationship between the height and the weight of a student related to the grade he makes in a class? Is there also a relationship between the score on a previous grade and the score on the current grade? Those are questions that can be answered in machine learning. Now, it's not as easy as calculating the average of scores. That I'm not going to give you that. So this is how machine learning works. We are trying to estimate something that is actually not uh, very easy to estimate. So let's choose some random numbers here. Uh, let's say equal to around between. So around between the height, let's say, let's say the height should be in, um, uh, in centimeters. So let's... Okay, so okay, whatever this is, I don't really know. So it might not be a real uh, measure of height. So let me see if I can make it to be decimal point, point four five, point six, point four. Okay, so it doesn't give decimal point. So let's say weight is so uh, fifty six point three. Um, this weight is okay. So I'm I'm just trying to, and this one is going to be actually run between run between uh, let's say twenty and hundred, twenty and hundred, or twenty and ninety nine. All right. So what I'm simply going to do, I'm simply going to move it down here. So okay, so I don't want this one repeating. So I'm actually going to use the save plus run between uh, forty and sixty. All right. Plus run between forty and seventy. Okay, so so let's move this to
skip pulse around between. Okay, so this is what I want. I want random values so like this. So it's also going to give me random values right here. So everything is actually random values now. So grade could be either A, B, or C, or A, C, D. So let's say grade could be A, B, C, and D. So I'm simply going to copy and paste. So copy this and paste. Copy and paste. So these are, this is just random data that we are going to be using to work. So at this point, I'm going to... Now the grade is not having any be anything to do with the last call, right? As you can see. So now I'm going to save it. So save it in a folder. I'm going to save it in my, in my drive C. And I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call it ML. ML101. Okay. So I'm going to call it... Let's just call it data. Mm -hmm. So data uh, that I sell, and I'm going to save it into ML101. Fine. So I'm going to close it, and I'm going to now open it, import it into Jupyter Notebook. So at this point, I'm going to go to Jupyter Notebook, and then I'm going to go to New. Um, just a second. Okay. I'm going to go to New, and I'm going to choose Python 3. So while it opens, I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call it Lecture 3. 3. Okay. So let's rename. So now I'm going to import it. So import. So now I'm going to use Python to import this Excel sheet that we created. So first I'm going to import pandas as pd. And I'm going to import uh, what else? numpy as np. Okay, I'm going to run. Okay, so I'm going to say pd dot reads uh, read Excel, and I'm going to specify the location of this file. C is going to be ml one hundred one and slash data dot Excel. And at this point, I'm going to put R here, and I'm going to run it. Okay, so it tells us. Um, some error codes, no such file in directory. So let's look at the directory so that we don't make any mistakes. So this is directory. I'm going to go to my drive, see where this data is located. And I'm going to go to ML101. So actually it didn't save in drive C. Maybe it saved in my document for ML101. So okay, so it saved in my document and I'm actually going to copy to drive C. So paste. All right, so this, at this point, I'm going to come back and run this file. So it also says no such file in directory. So let's try to use a backslash. Let's see, ML101. OK, so let's use an uppercase. So So the name is data.xls. All right, so at this point, I'm going to run. Let's see. Uh, no such file in directory cml101 data.xl. OK, so this is backslash at this time. Mm -hmm. Forward slash. Oh, data.xlsx. So that is a problem. All right. So at this point, we've exported the data into X, into, uh, into Python. So let's now look at the classes of machine learning problem. There are three classes of machine learning problems. Uh, one of them is supervised learning, unsupervised, and we have reinforcement learning. So let's start with supervised learning. These are parts. I put them there because I need to pay my bills. So a machine learning problem if we are looking at the scores we already have on the screen, so maybe I'm going to just shift this a bit upwards. So now, assuming we are trying to make an estimate of these scores, right? We can actually make two estimates. We can estimate the score. We can also, also, also determine the grade based on these other values. 
So if we are trying to estimate the grades, where we have only five categories, A, B, C, D, only four categories, A, B, C, D, we have categorical output, then that is called, is called a classification. Now let's not make any mistake. Under supervised learning, we have classification and we have regression. In classification, we are actually trying to estimate the output, which in this case, we are trying to estimate the grade made up of categorical values of only five outputs. Classification also applies in the handwriting recognition we discussed in the previous tutorial, where you are actually estimating only 10 outputs, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0. So you are trying to make a, an, a prediction, let's not mix the words, make a prediction of a future value based on some given input, and you are using the output to be only categorical values. You can only choose from categories. In supervised learning, we have the training data set and also uh, you have a, a data that corresponds to the output. You are given a training data set where you have set of inputs and also set of outputs. So, and in now in regression problem, we are trying to estimate the scores. The scores can be continuous values, which may be 24.5, 24.64 is a continuous range of values. It's not categorical. So that is regression. In regression, we are trying to make estimate of the score this time, and it's continuous. Scores can be anywhere between 0 and 100. It can be anything. It's unlimited. It's not categorical. But when it is great, when you have only five things to choose from, it is categorical, and that is classification. That is the difference between classification and regression. These two are supervised learning, are under supervised learning because supervised learning has to do with you have a training data set, and you have input and set of output. So you can actually read them up on your own and then let's move on to unsupervised learning. In unsupervised learning, you have a data set, you have only inputs. In this case, we don't have the last row of the score and the grade, we don't have it. We only have height, weight and last score. And we are trying to make some sense out of this data. What are we going to do with this data if we only have set of height, weight, and score, and last scores? Are we trying to determine the grade and the score? No, because that is not what we are told. So in case of unsupervised learning, we are flying blind. We don't know actually what this data is all about. We are simply trying to make sense out of data that we are giving that we don't even understand what it's all about. And in this case of unsupervised learning, we, are say, we say that we are giving unlabeled data. So the output, which is grade and score, is called labels, and, in, and we have features to be the other set of data. For instance, height, weight, and last score are referred to as features. And the other things that actually, actually correspond to what we are trying to determine, they are called labels or classes. So in unsupervised learning, we are given on label data. We don't know what to do with this data, if you put it that way. So classes of unsupervised learning may be clustering. One of them is clustering. So if you are given this unlabeled data, you are trying to make sense out of it. What you can do is to try to determine if there are any trends in this in this data. Are there some parts of this data that are, that exhibit some similarity? You cluster them into one cluster. Are there some other set of data that exhibit another a similarity among them? You cluster them. So in unsupervised learning, we have clustering. We also have something called Density estimation. Density estimation applies in statistics when you actually have to take a sample and from this sample you are estimating the density of a bigger population. Density is simply a function that gives a value that represents the value for the bigger population. So if you have a mean of a sample, then you say that this mean may be the same mean with a bigger population. Like in Budapest here, you want to estimate the number of students from different countries. So you take a sample of 1,000 students, and just 1,000 students, 40% are from uh, Hungary, or 10% uh, from uh, Africa, 20 or 10% uh, uh, from other European countries. Then you can actually use this data to say, okay, then it means that all students in Hungary can be explained in this way. So when you make some measurements based on a sample you collected, you are using it to estimate how the bigger population is. It's called density estimation. So it falls under unsupervised learning. We also have dimensionality reduction when you have a large set of data made up of several columns or, the, or several feature sites. 
We are trying to reduce this data so that you can visualize it in two or three dimensions. That is called dimensional reduction. The reason is because you can you cannot actually plot data that is in more than three dimension. You can't visualize it. So the only way is to reduce the dimension to two or three principal components so that you can visualize and understand how this data actually looks like. The next one is reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is also very important because although it's a kind of new concept relative to the previous two, now it applies to playing a game. So if you are playing a chess game, you have several moves. All the several moves will actually lead you to either winning or losing. So it means that any move you make has a score uh, or credit assigned to it. Either it's a negative move, meaning that it's leading you away from winning towards losing, or it's a positive move that's leading you towards the winning. So this is an example of credit assignment where you have several uh, decisions, actions, chunks of actions that can be taken that when combined together will lead you to the final goal. So in this case, let me open Excel and try to see if I'm, I can illustrate it. In this case of credit assignments. So let's say you have, you have something like this. You have a box like this. And you are trying to move this data F, X. You are trying to move the data X from all the way to this box, right? So now X can either move to this place, it can either move to this place, and it can either move to this place, it can either move to this place. So it can move one step at a time. So it means that each of the moves that it can move can be assigned a credit. For instance, if it moves upwards, it means that it's moving further away from the goal, and that may be a lower credit that will be assigned to that particular move. So a series of actions leads to a particular outcome, and that is roughly what credit assignment is all about, and that is part of reinforcement learning. I'm going to actually stop here, and I'm going to stop by showing you this picture that highlights what we've discussed so far. Let me try to zoom. So take your time, read it up, and see what you can make uh, out of it. Try to understand all of this, because this is the basis of machine learning. The next uh, class, which will be a very short class, I'm going to now discuss different theories of machine learning, different uh, branches of, uh, of different theories. Let's just call it theories of machine learning or building blocks of machine learning. I'd like to thank you for viewing, and I'll also like to say if you, if this has been informative for you, share it with every other person in your social network profile, and also like this video and leave me a comment telling me thank you, so that I'll feel motivated to continue making this class. So we'll see you in the next class.